Thanks for uh, tuning in today. And I just want to say Lance is going to get into a subject right now that's powerful. If you've missed any of these episodes, you can go back to MorningstarTV.com and you can go from the beginning where we start to talk about having a mindset that in the midst of the media that's coming out, you can have the helmet of hope is really powerful. And now we're talking, we're bringing it, but these sessions have been building, and now we're talking about convergence. And Lance, I know enough to know that it's that point in time that really catapults us into our destiny. Yeah, well, you know, convergence is such a beautiful word, uh, Dave, as you're talking about it, because how many of you actually have a picture of yourself in the future that it's, you know, it's like Joseph has the vision of him standing and his, everyone else is bowing, that God gives you an impression. When we talked earlier about that hope, hope is a mental image of an expectation that what I'm going through is going to come out okay on the other side. So hope is what guards your mind. Meanwhile, your heart is producing the faith to manifest it. So we put you here, and let's say that's a level 10, that's a level 10, that's a level five. And what we have is we're looking for, there's something about like a level 10 living that is abundant life. Independent of circumstance, we can actually be communing with the future. If you think about it, when you see what the outcome of your faith is, the Bible says for the joy set before him, Jesus endured the process which means that you can focus on the process or you can focus on the outcome. If you focus on the outcome of going to the gym and lifting weights, then it en enables you to endure the process because you're thinking about how nice you're gonna look when you come out of that process. And it really, it's the, it's the essence of our show, it's the essence of the ministry that Rick has built around the world, the prophetic perspective where you're seeing this thing in the future, that is the key to the kingdom of God, or one of the keys to uh, the it, kingdom. It is, which is why I'm saying, even in this small illustration here, I'm gonna put this helmet of hope on. You have to have the helmet of hope because hope covers your thought life, which is where the image of the future is stored. Yes. And then you're able to go through the process of whatever has to happen. Now here, what's this level 10 right here? What's this level 10 right here? I'm gonna suggest this level 10 is zeal for thine house has consumed me. The overcomer, we said, literally can get to the place where those punches that are getting thrown, rather than causing you to break down in a basement. What's wrong with me? What's wrong with me? You actually start to wax stronger. The, the picture is that when they used to wrestle in the Colosseum, Paul says we wrestle not with flesh and blood, they would literally anoint for two hours the wrestlers and the gladiators, and they would rub into them the compound of the oil so that as they got into the sweat of the match, it made them more slippery. Literally, you've got an anointing that intensifies in your warfare. Wow. wow. You become hard for the enemy to hold because you're, you actually have an anointing that expands under pressure rather than contract if you got your helmet on. So what happens here is this. Level 10, I'm saying that, um, that uh, you know, Napoleon Hill put it this way, and it's amazing how in the world secular people grab it. He said, definiteness of purpose. Do you remember this stuff back then in the old success yeah, yeah, science yeah. Definiteness of purpose backed by a burning desire. Catch this. So, so we could call that passion? Passion and purpose. Passion, passion and purpose. In other words, I have a purpose, I have a direction, I have clarity regarding what the outcome of my faith is, and I'm sustaining a 100% zeal for the Lord. I'm sustaining the zeal for the Lord regardless of what's happening on the way there. Now let me pull this in for, for some of us. Now, I, I, sometimes a good way to look at this is when you remove one of the components. Imagine I have zeal. I come in, I'm fired up. Rick, I'm fired up today. I really, he goes, what are you going to do? I'm like, I'm just not sure, but I'll tell you what. I've just got energy. I've got passion going. That's a level 10 in the zeal, but I'm about a zero or a two oh. in that. Or and the opposite, if I say, um, I really am positive that I'm going to come and write a best-selling sermon uh, book today and there's no I mean you can just feel like like they're almost it's like antimatter it's sucking the faith out of you as you're you're talking to people but level 10 purpose and level 10 zeal hopefully sure. if I've got it you've got it Lance That's you're doing right. a great job keep going so I want to go uh, to my convergence 
So, so convergence is a term that is an actual study term, 30 years worth of research by Dr. Robert Clinton of Fuller Theological Seminary. His study was that 20% of Christian ministers actually get to the place, and look at what that nuclear combination is, where they're doing what they are gifted to do, what meets their passion in terms of what they most desire to do, wow. and that empowers them with a job that enables them to do. In other words, if you've got passion to do something, but you can't get paid, you got a problem because you got to right. figure out how to create the job. If you've got uh, ability to do something and passion to do it, but there's no role, well, you're kind of frustrated. You're waiting for the next mission trip to go pray for people. The frustration is, how do I do this on a consistent basis? 20% of believers actually hit convergence. You know what convergence is? Convergence is when you respond to the invitation of God to join him in a job description such as you stepped into here, mm. such as I stepped into. And here's the beauty of it. If it doesn't exist, you can create it. Mm. Welcome to the world of an entrepreneur. If it doesn't exist, create it. Because the power to get wealth is by its very definition the power to create something out of nothing. Anybody could have wealth that's great. in yeah, the monopoly that's great. money of the 1980s and 90s. Now, with this whole thing about $6 trillion, $15 trillion, all the money that Mark Donald's talking about, you know what it means? We've been playing with monopoly money. You know what's sad? Even the world knew how to prosper during the last 10 years. While Christians are still trying to figure it out, secular people were playing with all that money. Good news is this. The game's getting reset. When nobody can prosper... That's when the supernatural distinguishes somebody from everybody. That is the key. This is when you get to shine. Yeah, that's so the here's key. the deal. God gives you invitations. You know what the problem is? We all want the invitation to convergence. We don't want the invitation to the cross. Woo! Everybody wants the invitation to go into the ideal career job where I can maximize my talent. But here's the challenge. What God calls you to is to put yourself under serving another person serving a cause. In other words, most believers are willing to pay any price for their own actualization, but they're not willing to pay the price to serve someone else. That is phenomenal. That's, that's amazing. I do want to uh, take uh, just a moment. I want to uh, uh, mention, just got back from Korea, had spent some incredible time at Prayer Mountain. It was amazing. But the anointing of God that's in that place that came upon my life started to make some of this stuff so real. And I want to say this, it is the Lord thy God that gives thee power to create wealth. As Lance is talking about this, as he's talking about moving into your passion and zeal, some of you have been sitting there and thinking you're stymied because you just don't see the opportunity coming, like Lance was saying. The creative ability that comes from the anointing. I just want to say it again. God gives power to create wealth. Lance, this is, this is it's changing. Just even as we're here in the studio, I feel the anointing of yeah. God over this. It is, because I think what God wants to do is he wants you to know your future, the ideal you, is locked right here on the inside of you. What God does through Can the process it, yeah. is, of the journey is he breaks you out of the, of the container of yourself, hmm. out of your self-reliance, out of your self-definition. Literally, there are, like the debt wall, there are walls you break through in the events of life. Joseph has a dream. Joseph goes into the pit. Joseph goes to Potiphar's house. Joseph ends up going to prison. But in the process of Joseph's coming in and out, he ends up in the place where God forms him progressively into a man who can fulfill his own destiny. God's working all things together for good, even through the economic challenges of what's happening. He's building a glorious church. This is uh, going to continue in our next uh, segment. But I want to make sure that, Lance, we, we end well. You might be watching us and you might be thinking that uh, suddenly all of the pressure, all of... Uh, the, the things that have been pushing against you start to make sense because in light of what we're talking about, you see that God is actually expanding you. He's increasing your capacity. He's pushing you into your destiny. Now, if you can take the segments that we talked about earlier that are all available on MorningStarTV.com and we, can, we talked about the helmet of hope, 
that what uh, uh, whatever you see in the paper, whatever you see coming down the pike, if we have that God ability, and only God can give it, I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely convinced that it is the Christian's edge at this point in time that we can take it and say, I was born for this time. And then if we can use the... Um, uh, the uh, you know this friction that comes against us is fuel to say you know what bring it on because this is what I've made uh, is what I was made for. It's bringing out the best in me. <laughs> it's, it's liberating me. <laughs> and if we can if we can if we can turn it and we can see our mountain in the kingdom of God and we can say I know what I'm destined for and if we can get passion and zeal and purpose behind it it's going to make a powerful impacting difference. We're going to bring it all together in this last session. This is this amazing stuff. Dr. Lance Wallnow, you don't want to miss this next session. Please make sure you come back and see this final episode with Lance Wallnow. <laughs>